Friday, Slot Car News, sponsored by LEBHobbies.com. LEB Hobbies, racing fast, made easy. Visit LEBHobbies.com. special guest today. We have uh, Simon from uh, Hornby, UK, the home, the home office, and uh, he's joined us. Uh, Simon, why don't you uh, introduce yourself? Hey guys, yeah, my name's Simon. I am the brand manager for Scale Electric. So that essentially means I am not in charge of the brand. That is uh, my boss, Mr. Martin, uh, but I am in charge of various different things, picking liveries, helping choose what cars we do, doing the licensing, all that sort of bits and pieces, right down to the detail of helping our marketing communications team to sell the cars into the market and hopefully help you guys to make an informed decision about which, which of them you wish to buy. And as far as uh, you personally, do you slot race? Do you, what, what's, what's your background? If so you my don't background is, I, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's fine. There's, there's, uh, there's skeletons in my closet, but they're not to do with slot cars, so it's fine. Um, <laughs> So my background is I received a scale electric set when I was about five or six, and I can't think of a, a time since when I haven't either played with slot cars or had an interest in them or done something with them. I worked in the trade selling them from 14 to 19, 20 when the shop when the owner retired and the shop finished. I joined Hornby 12 years ago, originally working on the Airfix brand, but the last sort of four or five working on, on scale electric. Um, I collect car. I did collect cars then. I then sold a lot of my collection to go traveling. But since then, I've started collecting again. And I don't go to any clubs to race. Um, there is one local to me, but it clashes with, uh, with football or soccer, for your audience, uh, that I do on a Monday night. But I do, when I get home with my own cars, I take the magnets out and I race them magnetless just on scale electric sport track. And we're currently having our attic converted and I'm going to build a permanent layout in the roof. Uh, which is going to be sort of a, a period 60s, 70s UK track, which maybe helps why we made the decision to reintroduce some of the buildings um, <laughs> in an already in an already painted form. Um, so that's my my sort of uh, history with the slot cars and slot racing. Uh, but in terms of real motorsport, I have a Browns Hatch season pass. I go to as many motor racing meetings as I can throughout the year, and you know, cars are my my main history, my main love, my main passion. Um, so to work on scale electric with racing cars big and small is, is it really is a dream come true very cool very cool so let's um let's jump in with uh with some questions here so yep. um i want to start by talking about uh last year's stuff there have been a lot of questions and i'm hoping you can clear up for everybody once and for all um the the cars that were supposed to come last year will they still be coming yes Okay. Not a single car that we announced in 2021 has been cancelled. None of them. They will still all arrive. They will, however, now, of course, arrive in 2022. The reason for the delays is due to global shipping and production and component shortages. So it's nothing we honestly, there's nothing that we could have done about this. Um, we, we saw it coming very, very late. Uh, we're not alone in this either. You know, I collect stock cars by other brands. and I don't think any of us have managed to stick particularly well to a schedule this year. Some yeah. of them slightly better than us, some have done even worse. So it's not, not the only ones. Um, so yeah, nothing has been canceled for your guys, especially it's the Corvettes I'm sure they're waiting for. They are pretty soon, they'll be Q1 2022, we hope. Um, and the other Camaro, the Z28s, you've had some new samples of them recently. They shouldn't be too far away either. So yeah, anything you ordered, retailer or a customer wise, they are coming. Nothing has been canceled. All of the stuff we announced at the start of the week, that is an addition to that. Okay, great. Um, and then let's get the other, uh, uh, let, let, let's, let's get this, the gorilla in the room as well. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, prices, I've been talking yeah. a lot on my blog about prices, about how they've gone up for essentially everybody. Just, if you will, um, just briefly address uh, why price increases. Okay, so uh, I can't go into the absolute detail of what we pay for what, but um, if I make up some numbers, so say we used to pay $10,000 for a 40-foot container from China to, to the UK. Uh, we didn't, we paid less than this, but easy maths. Um, that same container will now cost us $50,000. So there's been a four or five times increase in the cost of a shipping container. Add that to the fact that raw materials has gone up, um, at least for the audience in the UK, 
if any of you have had any building work done recently, check out the difference between a quote you had two years ago, a year ago, and now, and how much a bit of wood costs. It, it, it's crazy the difference that's gone up. Demand has gone up, but production capacity in the Far East has not followed suit, and therefore everything is more expensive. Raw materials, plastic, rubber, metal, engines, bearings, axles, everything is more expensive. Add that into the fact that labour costs are also going up in China. People are less keen on, on moving away from their villages and working in the towns and then going back as they used to. Um, and quite rightly, people in China wish to have a, a better wage for producing cars for the rest and, and product for the rest of the world to enjoy, which I can only say is fair play to them. Absolutely, they should do that. So all of these three together, shipping, raw materials and labour, plus labour shortages and anyone that follows the news, especially with um, production in the Far East has seen issues with the supply of power even out there to some of the factories, has resulted in prices going up. We would not increase prices purely out of greed. We are increasing our prices purely to maintain a set margin. And that set margin is there, frankly, to keep the lights on here. We will not be able to produce any cars if we do not make enough money at them to keep the business going. That, that is the, the hard and fast rule of it. Mm. Absolutely. And in actual fact, if we wanted to make the margin we really should do on the brand new cars, we'd have had to put the price up even more than we have which is why stuff that's already in stock, um, you know, the, the cars released a few years ago, that's why those prices have increased as well, to keep our range balanced, to keep it straightforward for a new consumer, and to try and negate some of the really horrendous price increases we've seen. Right. I mean, you know, Dave, when, when you worked in Skeletic, you would have seen probably some cost prices floating around um, yeah. as a couple of years ago now. If we could go back to those days and drop the price straight away. Because the thing is, you know, you're talking to somebody here who buys Skeletic as well. I buy stock cars. I'll buy... 50% or so of the range this year. Yeah, I get a discount, but I still don't want to spend too much. Mm. And the more the, the more expensive the cars are, the harder sell it is, more people have to choose, and the harder it is to get new people into the hobby. And we, we get all of that. But at the same time, we have to cover the costs of, of the business. Yeah, that's the one thing I've I've kind of made a point to to the people that that watch is that, you know, this isn't a charity. This is a business. Yep. And you need to be, you're in business to make money. That, that's a business. Mm -hmm. And no one wants to see prices go up because as everyone in business knows, as prices rise, there is a, a decreasing amount of sales you will get just because of the nature of any, I mean, it's just natural. That yeah, that I mean, the, the only sort of good thing a bit for us is the fact that it's the same for everybody. You know, some of our main competitors, their, their cars will be the same, at least in the UK, their cars will be the same price as us this year. And it's not just cars, by the way. If you look, say someone has a receipt from a, a, a grocery shop or a supermarket from last year, buy the exact same thing this year, I guarantee you there's things will be more expensive this year. It is right. everything. Right. Um, so it's not just us. It's just that, unfortunately, that's the way it is at the moment. Yeah, yeah. So let's, um, let's get back into actual slot cars and less economics. <laughs> yeah. Um, just generally, uh, before we start talking about the range specifically, just talk generally about your process, um, how you go about choosing what cars to make. So generally, as you alluded to earlier, we are not a charity. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot just choose the cars that we as a team like the best, or I think that a certain small group of our consumers like the best. I had to choose the cars that I think would give us the best return on our investment which is why you've seen so many TV and film bits and pieces recently. You know, the, the, the Batmobile, for instance, that we released last year, that does absolutely nothing for me on a personal level. There isn't one in my house, and there, there never will be. But it's a no-brainer choice for us to produce as a slot car because I know it has so many fans and it creates us so much um, interest, not just revenue, but interest. It gets us into some new eyes, the TV and film guys, those collectors that go to Comic-Con and things like that. But it's, you know, that, that is one of the main considerations. It must return on its investment. So that's why we choose some of the TV and film things. You know, Mr. Bean sat on top of an armchair of his Mini is not the obvious slot car racing. Thing. But when I look at the amount of traffic that item has generated to our website, the amount of hits it's had across Google Analytics, all across bits and pieces like that, that is one of the main styles of our range. Same with the Blues Appeal. Yeah. Don't appeal to me, probably don't appeal to you. Blues Appeal, Mike, because it's, you know, it's pretty, pretty no, cool. No, actually, it does um, appeal to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, so, you know, that is the main consideration. There's also a consideration of do our competitors do it? Mm. You know, on the GT3 world, Carrera have got quite a few other GT3 cars that we don't do. There's yeah. no point going head to head on them on some of those. We could do something slightly different and right. uh, power our own furrow there. So there's that. There's liveries. Um, 
you know, you can make a brilliant race car, but if it only has one livery, then we're going to be very short on releases. So we try and find stuff with lots of very good releases. So your Golfs, your Castrol, um, your JPS, some of the cigarette advertising brands. You try and do stuff with those sort of liveries on it as well to really hit back on that investment. So those, those are the main criteria. And then just what people are asking for. You know, people are desperate for things. When we announced the Capri, people then said, oh, an XJS or an SD1 Rover would be great to go with it. And we've just delivered both of those now in, in back-to-back years. So we do follow them what people are asking for as well. Okay. Um, so... Uh, let's talk, um, a little bit also about kind of what, what types of cars you release. There's a notable absence this year from, uh, anyone's range so far. Well, we've seen Carrera and Skelectric so far. Um, there's a notable absence of modern formula one. Um, it, can you, uh, can you tell us why? Yes. So this is the last year of the current rules in formula one. So if we wanted to produce, say, we'll just pick two random teams. We'll pick my favorite team, we'll pick Ferrari, and we wanted to do the champion and Max Verstappen. So we would have to tool two new tools there to do a car which will have a livery lifespan of one year. Yeah. We will then, because the rules are changing so much next this, this, is this season now, 2022, into the cars with the bigger front wings, different rear wings, different size, they're completely different wheelbase, yeah. they're different around the cockpit. Those tools would just be, be junk. We could do one release, we'll have to wait 20 years until there was sort of a legacy car, and then maybe we could pop like an anniversary special out of it or some other sort of release. Right. So that's why. When we get into 2023, when this year we'll have data on the new cars, I'm confident that some manufacturers will produce models of current Formula One cars then. But it just makes no business sense whatsoever. We will not sell the numbers to cover either the, the car models mm. and there's a licensing factor as well, because licenses for Formula One teams are not cheap. Um, mm. They are up there with the entertainment licenses in terms of cost so it needs to be something that's got some longevity and it needs to be sustainable for us it just so happens that this was one of the best formula one seasons in history and i was sat there watching it at home thinking oh, i really wish they had the new cars for this and yeah. then we could have capitalized on that but fortunately it's the way it is yeah i think there was a lot of us that watch i watch f1 as well and yeah. you know wishing that there was cars this year available Yep. You know, there's yep. just, there's just, just about nothing modern, yep. except, I mean, the most modern slot car currently made would be the Policar Monoposto cars, as you, I'm sure you've seen. Yeah, which are unlicensed, of course. So well, you, naturally, they're, they're, they're just like just, a solid body color. Yep. So, yep. Um, but um, yeah, anyway, so, um, uh, so um, licensing, mm-hmm. is there... You mentioned Ferrari, do, do you, and this isn't necessarily an issue or a question for, uh, do you know if Carrera still have the Ferrari license? I haven't heard myself. Well, they're releasing a 512 uh, BBI, aren't they? Yes. The, the Le Mans yes. Berlin Boxer, so I would presume they do. Okay. I don't well, know, I but know, I would I, presume so. I didn't know if it was still an exclusive, that that sort of thing. If, if, if that, that, That's fine. If um, I, I know that we don't. That's all I know. Right. Okay. That's fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> fair, fair enough. Um, so the cars that were shown the other day, which um, I, I, I don't know how you characterize that, are all of those cars going out worldwide? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so those, those are all our worldwide releases. Um, okay. uh, obviously, we do do specials for the markets, but those will be announced by the people that have ordered them, by the distributors in those markets themselves. Right. So like Australia normally gets some specific yeah. Aussie, uh, you know, the, yeah. the supercar. That, 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 and... That's up to uh, the guys at SMS, other model supplies to announce when they wish to. That's not naturally to do. Okay. Yep. Great. Uh, about how many uh, cars are there in the U.S. specific range? I know when I was with you all, there were about of the 50 or so cars that were released, about 10 were uh, U.S. molds or U.S liveries i should say um, um has, has that changed uh so you guys get um going to the states will be every single one of our releases <laughs> except for the specials for australia or anywhere else but you'll get the entire range to choose from right um and yeah there's still a focus on american products i mean you have the blues and bill mm-hmm. which is american blues and bill by the way um is a sidewinder full interior so if you wish to enter it in your trans am class at your local racing club you are more than welcome to it'll take up two lanes and be a bit top heavy but it is technically eligible um uh, then we have the the 1965 mustang 
mm-hmm. which obviously is it, that's quite a nice one that because that's so famous over here due to Goodwood and due to some stuff it did in the British Touring Car Championship. But obviously, it's an American car. Also, that is a, a sidewinder with a full interior to make it eligible for the Trans Am bits and pieces. Right. Then we have the then we have the Cobra as well, right. which of course is a worldwide but very American product. So yeah, the American market is important to us. It's always something we'll, we'll focus on. And I, you know, I've got sort of a rough, a pretty strong plan for next year and a rough plan for the years, years after that. And there'll always be an American product in there, always. Because right. I like American cars, especially the muscle cars yeah. of the <laughs> 70s and early 80s as well, actually. Things like the, you know, we've got the Z28 still to come out this year. And um, I'm sure we'll do a Fox body at some point because I quite like those and that 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 sort of era. So yeah, we'll we'll get around to those sort of bits and pieces. So the the Bluesmobile, I would be remiss to ask, does the uh, does the speaker work on top? The speaker does not work on top because if you were to put a sound chip in it, you wouldn't have an interior. And this one has got a full interior. It will come with both drivers, and it even has all the detritus and rubbish on the dashboard or trash on the dashboard rather <laughs> that the car has in the film. So it is. Detailed. And we, we knew we had some criticism from the Bat- Batmobile of only including Batman, not Robin. So this one does have both of the characters from the film as, as two driver figures in it. Fantastic. Um, the and the um, the and it's a sidewinder. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You Good know, our it. discussions about the sidewinder. Yeah. From- <laughs> yep. Um, uh, so the Cobra, I'm assuming that just for space reasons is an inline. It's, it's the same as the E-Type, so it's front-mounted uh, engine with a full interior, no DPR hatch on that. That's because if you did it as a proper inline, you didn't have a half-tray interior, and with an open car that looks so nice, it, it just it, it, it's a bit of a waste. I know for the digital guys that's a bit annoying, you've got a wire of chipping, but there is space. Um, and it will handle like a Cobra should. It's tail out, mm-hmm. power down, sliding around all over the place. It'll be, it'll be a fun car to drive rather than a quick, very quick club car, you know? So that's going to be a front motor car. Is that going to be an FC can or is that going to be a slim can? You know? Standard can. Standard, standard can. can. So the standard. Okay, great. Yeah. The um, only things that have the dreaded slim can are the Nigel Mansell Williams FW11 and the Lotuses. I don't believe anything else does for this year. Okay, great. Um, let me see here. So the bean car is coming. That's that was a that was a. Oh yeah, of course the the, the the minis uh, the minis have the slim line motor as well. <clears throat> Oh yeah, right. Okay. Um, so you you've had a, a big focus on the, the the Trans Am cars over the years. I mean, you've released so many Trans Am cars. Those molds have remained essentially unchanged for yep. more than a decade now. And now you're bringing out uh, the notchbacks. Um, I mean, that that's definitely a strength for you all. Is it still? Um, you know, you already kind of mentioned it's a priority for Skelectric. You're still feeling good about the about the Trans Am stuff, obviously. Yep, yep. The only reason there's any Trans Ams missing uh, from the range that we announced on on Monday is because, obviously, as, as you're very well aware, we haven't delivered all of our 2021 cars yet. So this range is slightly smaller. Uh, there are a few less, as we call them, reliveries. Um, but you will see some more Trans Am Mustangs, Camaros, Barracudas, all those sort of bits and pieces going forward in in the coming years. It's just that for this year, we we have we can't have another 60 cars announced as the rest of the ones that didn't come last year, because it's just too much. It's too much to make sure we can get it out of the Far East, and it's just too much to expect consumers to buy. Mm-hmm. So it's we had to stim it down a little bit, and because they were really those are the ones that sort of fell off the edge. But yeah, fully committed to the Trans Am era. Yeah, we'll do that. We're looking at potentially some new molds as well for that category, I'm sure, in the near future. So yeah, mm-hmm. 100%. There's some cool yeah. stuff yet to do in that. Yeah, definitely. There's a, there's a, there's a car or two that a uh, body or two that haven't been done. Yeah. N- notably a firebird hasn't been done. Yeah. There's a firebird. There's a silver ghost, which is very limited in liveries, but I really like it. So I can try and squeeze it in somewhere. Yeah. There's the earlier, there's the earlier Camaro house, obviously it's a 69, I think, isn't it? Also we can do a 68. Um, there's some other bits and pieces as well that has, has, has not been done. And there's a Falcon, do it for a Falcon, which of course raced in the UK as well in, in British Saloon Car Championships and at Goodwoods now. So there's, there's loads of other stuff we can do from that era, and we will get around to it, providing no one listens to this and decides to beat us to it. <laughs> right. Um, uh, TV and, and movie uh, license stuff has definitely been more of a focus for Scale Extra. Um, talk about that a little bit. Uh, it's just sheer weight of numbers of, of interest in it. I mean, I'm, I'm a racing guy through and through. You know, DeLoreans, Batmobiles, like I said, they, they do nothing for me on a personal level. But, um, you know, for every one racing car I sell, and I can use any racing car, I would sell three or four Batmobiles or DeLoreans. 
mm. such as the difference in terms of interest. So people look at that range and they think, oh, I don't really understand it. Why are they doing these TV and film, these gimmicky cars? It's because actually it pays for a lot of the other stuff. Mm. Um, so that, that's why. And, yeah. and they're fun as well. And actually, it makes marketing to Electric much easier because you're not just marketing people that are interested in. More people go to the theatre, go to the movies, than go to the racetracks. Right. So all of a sudden, it makes it marketing much, much easier job. Right, right. Um, you mentioned the, the, the scenery, the, the two new... There's well, they're new, but they're reissues to an extent. No. Are these new molds? They are resin. So okay. for those of you who purchase Hornby, Hornby Railways, we do something called scaled out in that, and these are one piece resin buildings. So these are pre-decorated. All you do is open the box, two bits of foam, chuck them away, plonk onto your layout, your track, your living room floor, wherever you want to put it, and it is a 1960s uh, control tower, a 1960s grandstand. They are based upon the original toolings from the 1960s. We don't have those anymore, but those mm -hmm. toolings are gone. Yeah. But these are ready built. To do the buildings in plastic would have been quite expensive because you'd have to have some assembly or painting and things like that on it. So the price would have been roughly the same. And instead, we have these lovely, detailed, robust buildings with period um, advertisement logos on them as well. They'll come. I think the control tower has Castrol and Dunlop in it, and the, grand, yeah. the grandstand has like Motorsport Magazine and a few other bits. We've done some deals with. Uh, different companies who are around in that period to have period correct mm -hmm. advertising on them and on the crash barriers as well so it's an experiment we'll see how it goes um mm -hmm. anybody that's asked us for buildings over the years um go and buy them you ain't going to get any more <laughs> uh, so uh, we'll see how it goes but we don't i wish i had a sample i could show you here but unfortunately they're out being being made mm -hmm. and being developed at the moment but they are really really cool and are, um they're very they robust as well are these a limited release or are they going to be, I mean, obviously everything is technically limited. We'll, we'll do a production run and then we'll see how they sell. If they sell very well, we'll order some more. If not so much, they'll quietly disappear from the catalog. So <laughs> ask, ask me in a year. Right. Right. Um, uh, what's, what have been some of the highlights for you working on, on some of these projects? What, are there has there been anything that stuck out any backstories about some of the cars? yeah the, the the cobra and the mustang so we've done the bill shepherd Cobra, which is the green one and the bill shepherd mustang that's because we, we 3d scanned these cars next to each other in his basically his garage in uh by fleet which is just very very very, very south london mm -hmm. and he's an importer and he races them and all sorts that was a pretty cool day to have those two cars there there was one of the x i think it was the x what i think it was the x target florio cobra in oh. there but it was to that spec and it okay. was painted the same and there were all sorts of mustangs and that was a very very cool day uh the lamborghini Countach um was actually you know that's a hugely valuable car and that was about 10 minutes from where i live in some hypercar dealership i found around the back of an industrial estate in a local town mm. and part next to the Countach there was a mura there were two veyrons an f40 oh, yeah a bitterini <laughs> you know it was just like wow this is an insane place um but yeah, you know, we, we went to Goodwood this year and got some livery information and a few other race meets, Silver and Classic. So it's been, as always with this role, you get to go to some really cool places and discover liveries and meet drivers and owners and do that sort of stuff. So when when you've been working on these projects, like you mentioned the Lamborghini, uh, you mentioned the Cobra, you mentioned the Mustangs, are you starting with scans of those cars? We're like trying to you, now, yes. you have a plotter that you set up to to take measurements of the car? Yeah, so we don't do it ourselves. We hire a, another company to come in and do it because scanning a car is actually quite difficult. Our, our guys over in Airfix and Hornby scan locomotives and, and planes quite a lot because they tend to be dusty and dirty and have, have some use on them. But uh, a racing car, a hypercar, and it's not being used is, is polished with an inch of its life, which makes scanning quite quite tricky because the, the laser refracts off the surface and goes everywhere. Okay. So we actually hire a company to do it. Uh, the reason we've moved to scanning is to try and make sure we have as accurate a mod bodies as possible. Um, mm. So when there's a real car, we will go and scan it. Right. Uh, if we can't, if we can't get CAD data, of course, for the modern stuff we tend to get get CAD data. So, you know, from this year, we from the top of my head, we scanned the yeah the Mustang, we scanned the Lamborghini, and we scanned the Cobra. You know, mm. so the, the Mustang, especially due to there being other models of a similar vintage on the market, we'll make sure we get it absolutely right. The Cobra is a very very subtle shape. Mm -hmm. So we scanned the Bull Shepherd car. Well, I would say about the Cobras, of course, is that every Cobra at Goodwood is slightly different. Yeah. And every Cobra at Goodwood is set up slightly different. And they're all slightly different under the skin. But somehow they're all legal. 
ish, <laughs> maybe. Um, so, <laughs> well, uh, they're uh, racing uh, legal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, Bill Shepard Co. is very, very accurate to that. But whether that's exactly how the Taco Florio cars looked in period, eh, well, maybe not. But, you know, we, we have to draw a line somewhere. Yeah. So, yeah, we are moving towards scanning where we can. And if not, then we are working closely with manufacturers and experts to try and make sure that we have our, our shapes are spot on. Mm-hmm. And I think actually, I'd say this year, the guys have done an absolutely incredible job with the designs. They all mm-hmm. look really, really cool. The Blues Mobile especially is, is, is mega. It's really, really cool. Have you scanned the Blues Mobile? Is that, a, is that from a no, scan? We, we, no, okay. we had data from somewhere else for that one. Okay, yeah. great. Although, interestingly, we were halfway through the design and I got in touch with somebody who lives in London who's got one complete with the, the roof-mounted thing. So we've checked it against a real, a real <laughs> one. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's good. It's huge, by the way. It's absolutely massive. I'm, is it going to fit in the standard box? No. So the Blues Mobile will come. <laughs> the Blues Mobile will come in a new box, which is both longer and taller, so that you cannot obviously it's got the speaker. Uh, it's quite funny because the, the Blues Mobile comes in this due to its length and and the height. But because Mr. Bean is sat on the roof of the Mini, the Mini will also be going into this larger box. So we have right. the biggest car in our range and the smallest in the same size box. So <laughs> when you receive the Mr. Bean Mini, it will look a bit silly with about sort of this much space either side of it in this box. But it has to because of course it's on the roof. So, uh, yeah, is what it That's is. That's funny. Um, uh, it's interesting. Uh, you've, you've used, apparently, some throwback packaging this year for, yep. like, the, the, the Formula One or Grand Prix uh, sets. Yeah, so the Grand Prix set and the 80s movie set, Back to the Future versus the yes. Lion, will feature 80s-style retro packaging. So black packaging, 80s logo, same sort of call-outs across the bottom of the box um, to really capture that imagination of uh, people like me who grew up in the the early 90s or late 80s. Um, it's, it's the right era for people with, with kids, with disposable income, to look at Scale Electric and recapture that good time they had with it back in, in period. Um, and for the, the collectors, the, the cars in those sets will be fully detailed, just like they are in the, the solo releases. So the kit will still have the strobe light, Lauren will still have a, mm. its lights and its detail, and the two Formula One cars won't have cigarette advertising on them because we wouldn't put that in a set, but they are accurate for Grand Prix where they didn't carry that. Okay. Uh, the the kit car as well has been uh, uh, there's been a lot of questions about it. Is that the when is that generally believed to hit the market? You think? I would hope March. For you oh, guys, yeah. it should be sort of March, February, March time. Yeah. And yeah. we know the I, I've heard before that the light is going to work across the front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It strobes at the right speed, back and forth. Yeah, that's that's very cool. Yeah, it's really cool. <laughs> it's very cool. Um, let me see here. Um, are there anything that you can tease out? Maybe it's entirely likely you can't. That's okay. Anything you can tease out that you're working on? Um, uh, no, not when we've just announced uh, the range. I'm, I'm, I'm literally. I have to even sign something that I'm sworn to secrecy. But a yeah. lot of the people that I'm seeing on on social media complaining, oh, why don't they do this? They never do that. We're aware of stuff that we're not doing, and we're aware of stuff that uh, categories we haven't gone into, and. As a result of that, I'm sure you will see us do some bits and pieces to cover that off in the near future. The stuff we're not going to touch, we're not going to touch more than NASCAR um, due to licensing and other bits and pieces like that. Um, and we're not going to do sort of banger cars and all this sort of thing like stadium trucks and things like that. We've got no plans to do that sort of thing anytime soon. Uh, but in terms of other areas of slot racing and bits and pieces, then yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get around to it and we'll work on some really exciting stuff for 2023. We're working on my favorite film car of all time. And none of you know what that is, but um, it's very, very exciting. So, uh, oh man. Yeah. No, I don't. Oh, I'm, I'm not giving any clues because it's, it's so famous that uh, one clue will do it, but it's, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, well. It's awesome. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it, honestly, cool. it's one of those things where I finished the call with the license and I was just like so happy that it looks like we're going to gonna get it and it's all good. Is there anything that ha- that hasn't been shown that will be coming this year? to the market like I, I know we don't get the um the club cars in the u.s and uh, i know I there's been a lot of questions about the about the the skeletor club cars i'm not sure what the situation is with the american club at the moment I, I, I think that that is possibly changing in the near future um the club cars we choose are usually very uk centric mm-hmm. um but other than that no i don't think there's anything that you guys aren't going to get at the moment we try and make sure our range is for everybody okay uh, great um, is there anything that I haven't asked that, that, that you'd like to talk about? Any burning issues? Um, I, don't I, think I really so. I think wish that people would understand this. Um, only that we can only do so much. 
and that we can't please people all of the time. And, you know, we don't know what, just, just when, you know, so I monitor all, all the Facebook forums, social media, Instagram, Twitter, all of that sort of stuff. But if you don't like the range, just saying, oh, this is rubbish. Well, that doesn't really help us. Let us know what you want to see. It might be that you want stuff that we'll never produce because it's completely, it never make us any money. You know, and, and don't get me wrong here as well. Stuff that won't make us any money is actually the stuff I want to make. You know, I want to make Chevrons and weird 1960s sports racing cars and stuff like mm. that. You know, I'd love to do a list of Jaguar. That'd be great, but it mm. probably wouldn't really work for us. <laughs> so tell us what you want to see, and it gives us ideas. It maybe is stuff that we haven't thought of. Maybe it is an area we haven't looked down. So, yeah, there's that. We've discussed the price the price rises. Uh, unfortunately, we, we just can't avoid them. Um, you know, the, the, the latest one came in very late to christmas let's do a price rise then we didn't plan for cars to be the price they are this year um but it is what it is that's the world we currently live in um unless i want to leave my job as brand manager for scale electric and go work as a sort of overlord of the world and do something about the current price <laughs> of shipping i can't do much about it um but no i think that's uh, that's about it for us um okay. uh, any questions i mean one thing i would say is uh, of our cars we are making a concerted effort to this is for the club racing guys we know we're not going to be your first choice. We know you're going to go for the NSRs, the Thunder Slots, the Slotits, and, and we get that. Uh, but we are trying to make our cars consistent, which is why the GT3 Porsche, that's inline standard cam motor. The Honda Civic Touring Car, inline standard cam motor. All of those cars that can be raced at a club level, we try and make them consistent. So if you want a scale electric class, then all the cars in the range can, can be used in that class. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, um, Simon, I really appreciate you uh, stopping by and uh agreeing to do the interview um you know i, I know you have a, a lot on your plate and uh really means a lot to the um, to me personally and i'm sure it means a lot to the people that'll watch the video and uh thank you very much yeah that's no problem man uh, for you guys watching if any of you have got any any questions um for me then by all means fire them into dave in the comments and stuff and dave just chuck them onto me in an email yeah. and i can uh, i can answer those where i can sort of thing and the most thing most important thing for us at scale electric by the way is that you, all you guys have fun with our products mm -hmm. uh, we don't mind if you race it we don't mind if you take the body and throw the rest away we don't mind if you leave it on the shelf and just look at it occasionally or stick it in the attic thinking it's going to earn you money in the future um the main thing is that you enjoy it we produce what are essentially they're not they're not toys as in a little car you push it on the track but they are things to make you happy and mm -hmm. we just hope that that's what people do they take them home in whatever context and they use them and they enjoy them so hopefully with the Blues Bill, Mr. Bean, or the Kuntash, or Nigel Mansell's Williams, or Z28s, right. Trans Ams, whatever you want to, want, to, want to do with them, guys and girls, then just hope you have fun. All right. Well, thanks very much. I really appreciate it. And um, until next time, guys, uh, see you all again. Yeah, no worries. Thanks, man.